There is nothing quite like being in the woods the moment the sun touches the horizon. In this moment, we witness Mother Nature usher in the dawn of a new day. The quiet sense of peace found here in our stand speaks to the heart of the hunter. And it is from here that we get to experience the purity of the world and both the beauty and excitement that is found only in nature. This stand of hardwoods has me taking aim on a two-year quest, one that I will never forget. This is like your dream western hunt come true right here. Those deer came in 30 yards from me. It's so awesome when it comes together. There he is. <laughs> to be in this moment right now is like it's pretty unreal. Absolutely perfect. But we got it done. It's, oh my gosh. Yes, thank you, God. <laughs> We're on hour number nine, nine of our sit, and uh, we got another three to go. We're heading into prime time. The last three hours of daylight have been the most productive three hours. The rut should theoretically be in full swing. We've seen a lot of deer movement all day today, which is why we're sitting dark to dark. We have every baby deer in the continental United States that has been, <laughs> face, sorry. Just waiting on a mature buck. Can you see your pants? No, it's too dark. This deer is so old. While I would have liked to have released an arrow on this ancient buck, I have no regret in leaving my bow hanging. There is something special about getting caught up in the moment, just watching. Buck just cruised by and I don't think he saw my decoy because he kept moving. I tried to stop him with a grunt call. He looked my way, but made a beeline right across the field.
guess the only thing I can do is hope that he kind of crosses this field here, looking for does and maybe sees the decoy. He's definitely on a mission, but what a beautiful buck. Oh my gosh. The rut brings unpredictable deer movement. And with that, I know that moving to another stand means risking bumping a cruising buck. But with my window of opportunity rapidly shrinking, I take the risk and make a move. There's a big buck coming down the fence line. no shot. All he had to do was hook two steps to the right and I had him and he hooked left following that doe and just so close. He's with her. He's back. I have no idea what I just did, but I hit a tree, not the deer. Gosh, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know, I mean, if I punched it or, I have no idea what happened, but I just center punched, center punched that tree. This went on with this deer for, I don't know, probably an hour. It just, it just wouldn't work out. And then he left and then he came back. And I mean, so close so many times and to blow it like that, that hurts. More times than not, we're only lucky enough to get one shot on a buck. Even though my hunt didn't end here, my opportunities did. And I spent the next year looking forward to coming back for redemption. Really pretty buck. The deer are moving through the same travel corridors that they did last year. Right now we're sitting a spot. There's heavy acorn fall underneath us, so it's a really good feeding area, and it's a travel corridor between these two fields. If the bucks keep cruising up at the other end of the field, though, we may end up with a stand change before the week's out. exactly why I love hunting whitetail over a decoy. That young buck came in and stood perfectly at 25 yards, gave me all the time in the world to look at him, and had he have been a shooter buck, it would have been storybook.
just made a tough call and I passed on a mid 130 type nine point. And there's an old saying that is you, you don't pass on the first day what you take on the last day. And I take that deer on the last day, but uh, I just passed him today. So I'm hoping that wasn't a mistake. I got four days to find out if it was. It's as if my history here is on repeat. Opportunity happens early, followed by encounter after encounter with eager young bucks all within range. The mature bucks have kept out of range, traveling by, giving me a look, but no shot opportunities. night which as it turns out was a mistake because that is the biggest buck that we've really had by the stand all week i saw some bigger deer across the field but nothing's just given me an opportunity and i honestly haven't even seen those deer that i saw that first night i think the weather had them really moving and it's warmed up a lot and that has changed so me passing on that buck night one is backfiring and I just tried to shoot that deer, I think, and I didn't have any luck. So the old saying, don't pass on the first day what you'd be willing to shoot on the last day, there's always truth to that. But when you're out in a place like this where you have a chance for 160 or 170 to come by, sometimes it's just worth being in the tree and having the experience and enjoying the hunt. As the sun sets in Missouri for my second unsuccessful year in a row, I don't really have any regrets. I knowingly took a gamble for redemption when I passed up the nine on the first night. When you gamble, you either go home big or go home broke. And the house won on this hunt. But one thing is for sure, I'll be back next year for round three.